Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this uh, lecture 7 of module 2 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start, uh, let me recapitulate what we have done in the previous lectures. Uh, what we have done is that we have defined what is known as a Nash equilibrium, an equilibrium concept used in game theory. And uh, we have tried to solve different exercises uh, just to give, a, give you an idea how Nash equilibrium is actually used. Uh, we have already uh, defined what is known as a strict Nash equilibrium where uh, the action profile is such that if someone deviates and tries to take some other action other than the Nash equilibrium action, that person is uh, strictly worse off. Uh, so and this applies for every player. So these are the preliminary things that we have done. <coughs> uh, what we shall do today is to uh, introduce another concept of game theory which is uh, extremely useful in finding what are the Nash equilibria and this is a concept is called best response function. The reason for you introducing this idea of best response function is that uh, in many cases it may happen that the number of actions that each player can take is quite substantial, it is a large number of actions. Uh, and it may even happen that the number of actions is infinite. Suppose uh, I can take any action, any I can choose any number between the interval 1 and 2. In that case, the number of actions that I can take is infinity. Now, if that is the case, then it is difficult to use the method that we have used uh, so far to find out the Nash equilibrium. Each and every action profile has to check, has to be checked uh, in terms of possible deviation and checking for whether that deviation is uh, profitable or not. If I have infinite number of actions, there will be infinite number of uh, profiles to check. So, what do we do? <coughs> we basically in that cases, uh, in those cases use the concept of best response function. <coughs> so, let me try to define what is best response function. <coughs> mm, let me try to give it, give an example so that it becomes clear and this example is from the case of discrete actions, then we can generalize this and give a general uh, definition. Uh, take the case of <coughs> battle of sexes for example. So, player 1 has 2 actions going to boxing match and going to the opera, player 2 also has 2 actions going to the boxing match and going to the opera and the uh, payoffs are 2, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. Now, in this case, <coughs> if player 2 is playing action B, player 1 has 2 actions to choose from B or O. Now, action B for player 1 is giving him 2 where action O is giving him 0. So, we say that with respect to action B taken by player 2, action B by player 1 is the best because by action by action B he is getting 2. So, it is written like this B, B for best response and we add the subscript 1 that is the best response of player 1. With respect to the action of player 2 which is suppose 
B is B. There are so many B's, it might be look a little confusing, well that is how it is. Uh, if player 2 plays action B, then the best response for player 1 is playing B. And similarly, if player 2 plays O, best response is no longer B, then the best response is O, because fr from O he is going to get 1, if he plays B, he is going to get 0. So, with respect to action taken by player 2, which is O, his best response is O. Uh, for player 2, it will be just similar, because it is a game is more or less a symmetric game. For player 2, if player 1 takes the action B, his best response is B and if So, that is how it is defined, I mean it is an example, uh, but if so, I try to give a general ex general definition, then what should it be? It will be that given the actions taken by other player, which action is best for me? That action will be called my best response with respect to those actions taken by other players. So, it is a functional relationship. What I get, uh, the value that I am getting here, uh, it's 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 a set value. It's like the following. Giving me an action, which has to be taken. So, This is defined as B i, i for player, uh, any player, i can be 1, 2, 3, etcetera, etcetera, and it is defined over A not i. So, A not i is an action profile which gives me those actions taken by other players, other players than i. So, this is the definition of <coughs> best response function of uh, any player i. Uh, it is telling me that best response function of player i with respect to, it is defined over the actions of other players is an action or it might be more than one action also such that given what the other players are playing which is a not i, this action a i should give player i at least as much as any other action. This any other action is generically given by A i dashed. A i dashed can be any action from his action set capital A i. Uh, so, this is how it is defined that gi given the action set I have, I shall pick that action as my best response which is giving me the best pair. Uh, just uh, a few comments. Firstly, it is a set valued function. Which means that it is giving me some action, it, some action which is to be taken by player i. It is not giving me any number or as such, number or any other thing. It is giving me what action the player should take 
uh, which give, gives him the best, best payoff given what the other players are doing. <coughs> now what was the purpose of defining this best response function? The purpose of defining this best response function is that we want to find out if we can use this idea to, uh, to find out the Nash equilibrium of any game. And how can that be done? <coughs> well, it is the following. I have an important uh, result. Think about this. A star, A star is an action profile. It's like A1 star, A2 star, etc., AN star. This action profile A star will be a Nash equilibrium if for every player, if for every player i, AI star belongs to B i a not i star. All right. So, which means that given other players are playing a not i star, uh, a i star, the action that is being that is the Nash equilibrium action must belong to the best response function of player i. And this is obvious because if you remember what is the definition of Nash equilibrium. In the Nash equilibrium, given what the actions of the other player, I should be doing my best. And that is, that means that that action must belong to my best response function. It is as simple as that. And the crucial thing is that <coughs> this should happen for everyone. So if I have two players, suppose one and two, and I am considering whether A1 star, A2 star, is a Nash equilibrium action profile, then it must happen that given A2 star taken by the other player, then the best response for me should be such that it should include A1 star. There might be other actions also, but it should include A1 star. And similarly, This should also happen that given the action taken by player 1 which is a1 star, the best response function of player 2 should include a2 star. Then we have a sort of mutually reinforcing of actions. Given what you are doing, I am doing my best and playing my action and given the action, this action taken by me, your action is that action with respect to which I took my best response uh, action. So this is this best response function therefore is closely related to the idea of Nash equilibrium. Uh, in particular, if it is the case that this best response function includes only a single element, that is it is a unique valued function, it is a single turn set, uh, in that case the thing becomes more easier. Uh, it is the following, suppose B1 2 is P1 so it is a single value and similarly In that case, what I need to solve, it does not have more than one element, that is what I am trying to say. In that case, what I need to solve is these two equations. One is A1 is equal to B1 A2 and A2 is equal to B2 A1. If I can solve these two, I will find the Nash equilibrium, all right, because uh, B1 
will be a function of a2. So, I have 1 equation in 2 variables and here also b2 is a function of a1. So, another equation in 2 variables, 2 equations, 2 variable. If I solve them, I get the Nash equilibrium. So, that is how it works. Uh, before I tell you how to solve these problems in case of continuous variables, let us look at how it this device, this idea of best response functions can be used uh, if we have discrete uh, actions like we have we, we, we have been having so far. So, uh, take this game and we shall try to see if we, whether we can use the idea of best response functions to find out the Nash equilibrium. So, this is the payoff matrix. Suppose we were we are to find out the Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibria uh, by using the best response function. Then what uh, is done is that first let us try to find out what are the, what are the best responses of player 1. Now, B 1 that means B 1 given L is what? B 1 given L means if player 2 takes the action L what is the best action for player 1? Well, it is a single action which is M. So, we have a singleton set. If the action of player 2 is C, then his best response is T. If the action of the first second player is R, player 1 now has two best responses, one is T and the other is B. All right. So, these are the best responses of player 1. What about player 2? If player 1 takes the action T, his best response is L. If player 1 takes the action M, he has two best responses L and C. And if player 1 takes the action B, there is a single element R at which he is getting the maximum P of 2 which is R. So, uh, this is how best response functions ca can be used in this exercise, but what are the Nash equilibria? <coughs> well, to find that out, uh, we shall use a very simple technique. Uh, if player 1, player 2 is playing L, player 1's best response is M, right? Then we put a dot over 2. Why over 2? Because we are considering the best response of 1, that is why I am putting a dot over the uh, payoff of 1 which is 2. If player 2's action is C, his best response is T, so a dot here. If his action is R, there are two best responses, here one, here another. So, these are the, these take care of the best responses of player 1. Now, let us talk about the best response of player 2. If player 1 is playing T, his best response is L, so I have a dot over 2. If M, L and C, C, if B, only R, only R. Now, I have, once I have put all the dots, uh, what are the Nash equilibria? Well, the Nash equilibria, the Nash equilibrium action profile will be that action profile where I have two dots, not only not a single dot, but two dots and this is happening here and here. 
So, there are two Nash equilibrium in this case. One is M L, the other is B R. Two Nash equilibria are there. <coughs> now, this was about Nash equilibrium in case we have. Uh, a pair of matrix and all that, but the same idea of finding the best responses and then try to match the best responses of two player because what is happening here is that we are trying to match the best responses. If the two best responses are intersecting, uh, they are matching with each other, which is happening uh, happening at M L and B R, then those action profiles are defined as the Nash equilibrium. Uh, the same idea can be done diagrammatically also how it can be done. Let us take another exercise. So, this is a diagrammatic uh, technique. So, here the game is the following. Now, instead of putting dots here, what we are going to do is to put some dots, but not in this mat matrix itself. Uh, what we are going to do is to draw to a axis like a x axis and y axis and we are going to put the actions of player 1 here A1 and actions of player 2 here A2. So, A uh, player 1 has 3 actions T M B, T M B and player 2 I know has 3 actions as well they are L C and R. So, L C R. Now, given player 2 is taking action L, what is the best response of player 1? It is M. So, L M, here is L M, I put a circle here. Circle is representing the best response for player 1. So, circle is like B 1 A 2. If player 2 plays uh, C, then 1 has two best, uh, one single best response which is C, uh, which is T. So, C T I put another circle here and if player 2 is playing R, player 1 has all the 3 are best responses. So, uh, R T R M R and B R. Uh, now, let us think about player 1, sorry player 2 and uh, player 2's best responses are, will be given by dots in this diagram. Now, if player 1 is taking the action T, player 2's best response is C. So, T C here I put a dot and this dot since there is a circle already there I put the dot inside the circle. If player 1's action is M player 2's best response is L. So, M L is another 
m l and finally if player 1's action is b uh, all three l c r are best responses uh, for player 2 so b l b c b r b l b c b r now uh, as one can guess from the exercise that we have done just now through the uh, matrix that is this one uh, one can guess the nash equilibria will be those action profiles where i have the dot as well as the circle so there will be three nash equilibria here one is here the other is here and the third one is here so the nash equilibrium will be called the nash equilibria three nash equilibria are there one is m l then we have t c and we have p r this can be checked from the matrices <coughs> suppose m l i am considering this one now obviously player two player one deviates he cannot be better off he can either get 2 or get 1 which are less than 3 what about player 2 if he deviates he gets 0 and 0 again they are worse they are worse than 0 they are worse than 1 then we have tc from this if player 1 deviates he gets 0 which is less than 1 if player 2 deviates he gets either 2 or 1 which is less than 3 and br uh, similar to the logic provided before if player 1 deviates he gets 0 which is not better than 0 uh, which player 1 is getting here and if similarly for player 2 if uh, player 2 deviates he gets 0 which is not more than what he is getting in the Nash equilibrium. So, these 3 are the Nash equilibrium. Now, uh, these were the cases where we had discrete actions of each player and uh, we have seen that we can find out the Nash equilibria in these games uh, by using either of these two, two techniques either directly using the payoff matrix or by using a diagram which is a representation of the payoff matrix itself. Uh, now if it so happens that the number of actions is uh, they are not discrete but they are continuous variables uh, then what happens then uh, can this method of uh, can this idea of best response functions <coughs> be used profitably and the answer is yes let us take uh, a case <coughs> this game is called synergic relationship game And the idea is the following that I have two players, so players and the actions that can they can take it. Uh, so, let us call A1 is the action of first player and A2 is the action of a second player. They can be any number between infinity and 0. So, any positive uh, non negative number is allowed as an action. Uh, what about the payoffs? It is represented by the following for player i, the payoff that player i gets is a is a variable of two. Uh, it is a function of two variables a1 and a2 and it is given by a i c plus a j minus a i where a i is his effort level here a i and a2 a1 and a2 are the actions which represent the effort level put in by each player 
uh, effort level for what? Well, this is a relationship. The story is that uh, do two players are involved in a relationship. Uh, if I put more effort, given the effort level of the other player, I should get more benefit out of the relationship. It, it helps me also, it gives me more satisfaction. But if the effort level put in by the other player is constant, it is not changing, it is not increasing, then if I go on putting more and more effort, after a point of time, the benefit that I get uh, goes on declining because uh, if the other people person is not contributing, uh, I do not feel very happy about it. So th that is represented by this payoff function. Initially given C and given AJ, if AI rises, then this UI also rises because suppose AI is less than C plus AJ divided by 2. Oh, I forgot to mention C is positive. C is a positive constant, it is a con given from outside. Now, if AI is less, obviously, if AI rises, the whole UI rises. So, here I have a game theoretic situation where the actions taken by each player could be a continuous variable A, I, and AJ. In particular, I am going to consider two players only, one and two. So, the payoff functions will look like the following. This is how the payoff functions look. <coughs> Question is what is the Nash equilibrium here? Now we are going to use the technique of best response functions because as you can see you cannot uh, you cannot draw a payoff matrix for this game because the number of actions is infinite. Now, uh, how, what was the definition of best response function? Given the action of the other player, uh, I should pick up that action or those actions which is maximizing my payoff. So, in other words, what I should do to find out the best response function is that I should maximize ui, say e1 with respect to e1. I should find out that value of A1. I should find out that value of A1 which maximizes U1 given the value of A2 and that will be my best response to A2. So, this translates into uh, maximizing A1 C plus A2 minus A1. This I have to maximize subject to uh, with respect to A1. Now, uh, th this is a very uh, common problem in differential calculus. If I want to maximize a function with respect to a variable, what I do is I have to satisfy what is known as the first order condition, which is that the derivative of this function with respect to A1 has to be equal to 0. This is the first order condition. Now, let us see if it is uh, what do I get out of this condition here? It will be C plus A2 minus A1 plus A1 multiplied by minus 1 is equal to 0. It is a product of two functions a1 and c plus a2 minus a1. So, it will be uh, by the product rule it will be c plus a2 minus a1 multiplied by the deriva derivative of a1 with respect to a1 which is 1 plus a1 multiplied by the derivative of c plus a2 minus a1 with respect to a1 which is minus 1. And if I simplify this, what do I get? 
c plus a 2 minus 2 a 1 is equal to 0, which means that a 1 is equal to c plus a 2 divided by 2. This is first equation. Now, notice if I am maximizing a function with respect to a variable, it is uh, this is a necessary condition, this is a first order condition, but there is a second order condition which is the sufficient condition which says that this should also be satisfied. This should also be satisfied and which is satisfied here because what is the left hand side? the left hand side is minus 2 and which is less than 0. So, the second order condition is satisfied. Which means that this is indeed the best response function for player 1 and what does it say? It says that uh, given the changing value of a 2, a 1 should vary according to relationship one, according to this uh, this one, this function 1, best response function 1. And if I want to draw this in a diagram, how does it look? Now, a 1 this 1 can be simplified as a 2 is equal to minus c plus 2 a 1, which means it has a slope of 2 and an intercept of uh, minus c. In particular, if a 1 is 0, a 2 is minus c, if a 2 is 0, a 1 is c divided by 2. Suppose this is c and this is c divided by 2, uh, suppose this is again c. So, it this curve will this line, this is not a curve, this is a straight line and this should look like this one. It has a steep slope, slope of uh, 2 and an x intercept of uh, that is horizontal intercept of uh, c divided by 2. Okay. Now, let us concentrate on the other, other best response function. Now, before concentrating on the other best response function, let us see what it means. Uh, what it shows this best response function of player 1. It shows for each value of a 2, if I take any value of a 2, suppose this arbitrary value, I find that value of a 1 which is the best response for player 1. So, if I take this value, I draw a perpendicular on this line, from the intersection point I draw another perpendicular. And, uh, this point should give me the best response of player 1 with respect to this action of player 2. So, this is how this uh, function is this line is interpreted for each value of a 2 this line gives me the best response of player 1. What about player 2? Remember u 2 is u 2 looks like this is u 2. And so, I have to maximize this uh, with respect to a 2, alright. 
uh, and if I do so again I will have a first order condition, I will have a second order condition, but the exercise will be exactly the similar that we have done before. And if it is exactly the similar then the function that I am going to get the best response function for player 2, it will look like the following. This is how it should look because for player 1 the best response function was a1 is equal to c plus a2 divided by 2 for player 2 it will be c plus a1 divided by 2. Now if I want to plot this line how will it look? Let me just remove these lines so that it becomes more clear. Now this line uh, if a1 is 0, a2 is c divided by 2. So this is c divided, c divided by 2 and this line passes through this point. And what is the slope? Slope uh, is half. So it will be a flat line like this. This is the best response of player 2. And uh, the interpretation is just like the interpretation before. It is telling me what is the best response of player 2 given any action of player 1. So I have to read from here given any action of player 1, suppose this is the action of player 1, A1. I am going up to the uh, line of B2 and from that I draw a perpendicular on the A2 axis. So this is the best response of player 2 with respect to this action of player 1. So this is how it, uh, it is read. Question is which is the Nash equilibrium and the answer is very simple. Nash equilibrium it is that point where these two lines are intersecting with, with each other. Since both these lines are straight lines, there will be a unique point of intersection because these lines are not parallel. Uh, so it means there will be only one point in which they will intersect and that point is here. Uh, let us call this point M and you can figure out intuitively at least from the diagram that this point has the coordinate CC. This can be verified by solving 1 and 2 also. So if I solve these two equation a1 is equal to c c plus a2 divided by 2 and a2 is equal to c plus a1 divided by 2. If I solve them together, I should get the same solution because let, let me just verify a1 is equal to c divided by 2 plus half a2 and in place of a2, I can write this. So now if I uh, multiply both sides by 4, So a1 is equal to c and from 2 we get a2 is equal to c plus c divided by 2 which is equal to c. So indeed uh, from the diagram itself what we have seen the intersection point is cc and that is also can be obtained that also can be obtained by solving these two equations 1 and 2. Now why is this point? 
being called Nash equilibrium because of the thing that we have seen said before that remember uh, this is what we have said before if I have two player and if it so happens that there is one point at which the best response function uh, the best response function is giving me a unique point then I have this unique point as B1 uh, and B1 is a function of A2 B2 is a function of A1 I solve them I get a unique uh, equilibrium uh, Nash equilibrium and uh, if I look at the diagram also the same thing is verified uh, here from C2 so from C if C is the action taken by player 2 what is the best response for player 1 I go here and I reach here this is the point C by the horizontal axis so with respect to the action C by player 2 C by player 1 is the best response similarly from here if I go up I reach B2 this line B2 line and from B2 I read out that this is again coming back to the same point C so going from the same point and we come back to the same point and that's why uh, this is a Nash equilibrium okay now uh, this was the case where the best response functions were linear there were straight lines in general best response functions are not straight lines it can be curves and if they are curves then uh, it's not necessary that the points of intersection uh, is just there is a single point of intersection there can be more than one point of inter intersection and if there are more than one point of intersection then uh, obviously the number of Nash equilibria will be more than one <coughs> so that is uh, that is how it is solved so uh, before we end this lecture let me just take you through what we have done in this uh, lecture <coughs> basically we have introduced the concept of best response functions and how to find out Nash equilibrium from best response functions we have uh, studied two exercises uh, for in the case of continuous variables and we have al also shown how uh, in case of discrete actions uh, the idea of best response functions can be used to find out the Nash equilibrium thank you first define best response functions so best response function a best response function is defined for a particular player it is defined as So this is the uh, a notational definition of best response function of player i written as b i. Now this is a function of a naught i, a naught i is the vector of actions of other players. So best response function of a particular player is defined over uh, the list of actions of other players a naught i and it is a set valued function. Okay. Uh, it gives us a set of actions of player i which are best uh, given player i's payoff function and given what the other players what actions the other players are taking. So that is how the best response function is defined. 
in particular the the base response function could be uh, could be null valued which means there is no no unique uh, or even more than one best responses to other players action or it could be uh, a function which specifies more than one action which are best given what the other actions are. Let us go to the second question. How are best response functions used to define Nash equilibrium? this is the uh, this is the relationship we want to prove so we say that a star is nash equilibrium remember a star is a vector of actions it's like a1 star a2 star etc etc a n star so this vector of actions is a nash equilibrium if and only if every player's action that is genetically genetically a i star is a best response to the other players actions. So, symbolically this can be written as a i star belongs to the best response function of player i and this is true for all i. Okay. So, this is how this base response function uh, is relating to the concept of Nash equilibrium that in the Nash equilibrium every player's action uh, should be belo should be belonging to his or her best response functions and this should be true for every player. The third question use best response functions to define Nash to find the Nash equilibrium of the battle of sexes game. So, if you remember the battle of sexes game it looks like the following this is the wife this is the husband and there are two actions here and these are the payoffs. Now, we can easily see that the best response function of the husband given the wife is uh, going to the boxing match is going to the, is to go to the boxing match and the best response function of the wife given that the husband is going to the boxing match is also going to the boxing match. So, uh, by using the definition with the, the relationship that we have just uh, described B B is a Nash equilibrium. Similarly, O O is a Nash equilibrium because given the wife is going to the opera, the husband will go to the opera that is his best response and given that the husband is going to the opera, wife will go to the opera. So, these are the two Nash equilibrium. Mm -hmm.